What is up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here with me today. If you are new here, please make sure you go ahead, slap that like button for me because it helps support the channel. Also, make sure you guys subscribe and hit that notification bell so you do not miss a video. We are here to talk about all content creation, growth, independent artists, all that fun stuff. I have singer, songwriter, amazing person, <laughs> human, Insta friend, everything. Dorian, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? First of all, thank you for that intro and thank you for having me. You Listen, you are so welcome. When I thought about this series <laughs> and bringing creators on, artists on to talk about our journeys, you were one of the first I thought of because you have been like musically in my life this past year. I, I, I sent you my Spotify rap that you are yes. literally like number yes. two. Oh, that meant so much to me. You don't even understand. Like, I mean, it's really the reason why I do it. Like, I love music, but to be able to share it and for it to touch someone else, like that means more than anything. That doesn't have a price tag on it. It feeds my soul getting that kind of love that that you give. So thank you so much for the support. You're welcome. And I, I've gone the same way ever since I started content creation, music, YouTube, all of that. I've started kind of just searching for impact rather yes. than use numbers, revenue. Like I, the one yes. time I heard someone drop a comment and said, listen, I'm watching your videos because I don't feel good or you're making me feel like this or you got me out of my depression. I realized like, oh, this is bigger than me. Like this is so much bigger yeah. than any analytics. So I always made it a point that when I feel something strong for someone's channel or their songs or anything, I'm like, I'm right there in their DMs to let them know how I feel yeah. about it. <laughs> Yes, and you've been giving me love so much, so I so appreciate it. It means so much. I would be lost without your music right now. Like, this is surreal <laughs> to be doing this interview with you because there's there's many different artists that I, I want to interview and get on the channel and talk about creation, but to actually talk yes. to a person who's, like, so high up in, in what I listen to, it's, <sighs> it's like, surreal moment right now. Like, your oh song is <sighs> life-changing. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you right now, the first time I found you, um, such a cute story. I, you, I, I was going through the Instagram feed. Yeah. And you had a promoted, you had waiting promoted. Oh, yes, waiting. So I heard like a snippet. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you, I kept rolling back to, I, I heard it, I was sliding through, right? And I heard it and I went through my, you know, kept on going and I was like, yeah, yeah. I need more of that. Like, what is <laughs> up? So I saved it in the corner, right? And then, like, uh, and then eventually, like, went to your profile and got into the Spotify, and I yeah. heard the full song, and I immediately messaged you. I, I think that was, like, my first message to you. I was like, it's oh, waiting. I love it so much. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes, I do remember that. And you know what? The, people always tell me that song hits a little differently, mm -hmm. and it's one of my most vulnerable songs. So I think maybe you can just feel like, vulnerability and you can feel everything with that track <laughs> i love it so much i cannot thank you enough it for it and I, the one of the most beautiful things about this is like is is so is exposure obviously and i'm yes. gonna have your youtube link and all your music links in the description box down below because i need for people to know this song like i <laughs> need people to know that one golden eye <laughs> and i do are Ooh. my top three favorites and I just don't know where I'd be without them because the thing is with your music is it's healing on different levels. And what I realized is that like, I've gone through different things like pain, relaxing, um, mm -hmm. getting ready to go out. I feel yeah. like you have like a song for, for all of that. Wow. Um, yeah. Wow. No. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much. So much. Oh my God. I'm a fan. You are giving me so much life right now. <laughs> Listen, I'm a fan for, for life. And that's why you're here. That's why I'm doing this is because I'm trying to just spread that love of your music because it, it just so needs to be much. heard. I can't like, it's so, so good. It's just so good. So that means so much. <laughs> I can't even put into words the life that you're giving me right now. So thank you so much. Oh truly. God. It's, it's my pleasure. Thank you for those songs. I, I wake and fall asleep to them. Like it's, it's so it's very like, it's an ethereal feeling. Um, gosh, especially I do, but we'll, we're going to get into the behind. Okay, the, yes. Yeah. We're going to get into all the songs and the lyrics and all that because okay. I have questions and all that. But what I yes. want to know from you um, mm -hmm. is your start. Like 
Where are you from? How did you get into music? Where did you get that first spark that made you be so vulnerable, so open and so dedicated to your craft? Because it shows, yeah. so I'd love to know how it began. Oh, thank you so much. Well, you know what? I've always loved music as a kid. And so I've always been that one, even back like in the 90s, you know, with the tape player, listening to the radio, recording my favorite songs and mixing them together and doing all of that. I've always loved music, but I was in the military um, right out of high school. So I was in the Air Force for about eight and a half years active duty. And then I went to school full time. And then that's when I really kind of re-engaged with my love of music in Hawaii. I was living in Hawaii. Um, and I really just took that time to kind of dive back into the love that I have for it. And then back around 2017, I want to say, is when I really started writing full force. I think there was just this spark that hit me one day. Once I, you know, just practicing writing and listening to music, I uh, just started, I, I can't even really explain it. It was like a, a spark just came to me and it, it fueled the passion of mine for music even more. Um, and it was crazy because I, I really got to a place where I was like just writing and writing and writing and writing and writing and not really dreaming much past that. Um, and it wasn't until I wrote my song, Anything Goes, that I really was like, okay, I think I'm doing something here. Let me actually like try to put some of this music out. Um, and so I released it on my 30th birthday and I had gone through so many things on a personal front in my twenties to where I said, you know what? Dorian has to live for his dreams and live for himself and, and, and start doing those things that are the desires of my heart. And so I was writing so much for a therapeutic purpose as well. And I felt like, this writing really touched and helped me. I really want to pass that on to someone else. And it started to feel more and more and more like an assignment of mine mm -hmm. and a gift of mine. And so once I really started feeling that and running with it full force um, in, in purity, authenticity, and in purpose, I really just felt like, okay, I'm, I'm doing something here. So I'm going to take this leap of faith and start releasing some of this music. And then the feedback that I was getting was just so overwhelming, the love and, and the support, it just meant so much. Um, and so, I mean, I, I grew up singing in, in the church choir and things like that, but it wasn't until just recently, a few years ago, that I really started diving back into the music the way I felt like I should have been for so long. <laughs> Yeah, there's such a difference between like enjoying music and then mm -hmm. being an artist and creating music because you, yes. you then find out what you want to create, how, how you want to be portrayed, what you want your message yes. to be. And sometimes yes. it's so interesting that it's so different than the music that you listen to. Yeah. You, you know yeah. what I mean? You realize like what you mm -hmm. like and who you are through what you yes. write. It's like it's an yes. experience. You have such vulnerability on your songs. Like I can feel right. the emotion and I'm very empathic towards music. Um, yes. But a big question that I, I've always had while, while listening is I feel like I don't even have to ask it because I have been in, in over the top crazy love. Um, yeah. in and out of it and mm -hmm. I have a feeling through your lyrics that you have yeah. also been in a spell binding soul binding love oh baby yes okay. but you know we've been through the ups and the downs you know what I mean oh, um, yeah. we've been together for 12 years and so it really gave me so much to talk about not even just like the love between he and I but then also how our love affected like my personal life my family and things like that, different loved ones. Um, and so that fueled so much of the writing. It was just like, okay, this is really a huge part of my life. How can I get the stuff that's in my soul out? How can I transmute that energy? How can I write something that I need to hear or, or pray? Or what is God telling me? You know what I mean? It depends on the song and the circumstance, of course, but it definitely is a love driven uh, thing of mine. I, I, I write about love in so many different facets of it. And my relationship with my husband is definitely one of the hugest driving forces. In, in okay, that. so that was my next question. Like, are you currently involved <laughs> with a significant other? So you're married. Yes, yes I am uh, married. We actually got married during, during the pandemic. Uh, July of 2020 is when we got uh, oh, officially married. Thank you, thank <laughs> you. And like I said, um, you know, we've been together for 12 years and you already know in gay years, that's 112 years, okay? <laughs> that's a long time being with just one person. 
but I could listen, I commend you because I come Thank from, you. I mean, as I gotten older, I've become um, more of a fun, playful character, I can say. Yeah, yeah. But I <laughs> come from the world where I've always been searching for what you have. Um, I haven't given up on it, but I definitely am, um, how you say, like living my years right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I haven't <laughs> given up on finding what you have, but yeah, no, no I understand oh what you goodness. mean in gay world about how, yeah, so I commend it all the more and thank you for doing it. Like, that's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. We we are so happy and in love and excited for our future. We're talking about kids and things like that. So love is so real. And that's another reason why I write because I it, it really is like a testimony of mine. You know what I mean? We've been yeah. through so much, but at the same time, I know that's my soulmate and vice versa. So it's like, I want to share that with the world as well. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you should, and you have, and we are all here for it. I can almost like feel that love, that vulnerability, that passion, like through the lyrics. And that's like what I look for because when I, in my own significant like love experiences, what mm -hmm. I, what I found is that to transfer that message or explain like how I'm feeling is almost impossible, but yeah. somehow like your songs do it um specifically yeah specifically ultimate classic ah uh, yeah. yeah like uh, like <laughs> that song i because i had like more of like a somewhat of a toxic relationship um in the past okay. couple of years um that i got okay. out of recently it's now over i'm out of it but um Thank you, yes. yeah <laughs> but i remember listening to that song while i was in it and thinking like like this it like as, as troubling as that relationship was he was my classic romance and I remember oh, okay. hearing that song and being like yo like he this is like about us like I love it like yes <laughs> yes yes we're magic together <laughs> oh, so good and I'm so happy to like be able to thank you and tell you like in person like what those songs mean to me because I just like I said like no matter what the emotion like Mm -hmm. I, I can find a song between your EPs and the recent album. Like I can find a song that can make me vibe. You even have more like upbeat, like dare I say it, but that whole like eighties upbeat weekend sound yeah. that's going on. Yes. Right now. Oh, I love him. Yeah. I love, I love yeah. him. Too. And I think that's like where I, like, that's who, that's why I listened to before I found you. And then I found you. <laughs> <laughs> because you know what? At the end of the day, it's so weird. Like we, ha we all have our mainstream artists that we love. But as I've gotten older and I've become a creator and an artist myself, I like genuinely am being more attracted and and wanting to listen to more independent artists, more LGBT artists. Like, yeah, yes. I'm like, that's yeah. it's weird because like I obviously grew up like with all the mainstream artists, like everyone else. But now that I'm in this world, like I would rather take the time mm -hmm. to go through an album of someone who's independent and someone who hasn't been heard as much rather yeah. than someone who's just out there, got the deal and then just yeah. you know, blew up. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I so agree with you. I think that, you know, sometimes when you get plugged into that big machine, your content gets watered down a lot from a substance point of view. You know what I mean? It's very rare that you really get someone that is able to put something a, a full body of work that's completely authentic to who they are if they're like super super mainstream so i totally agree with that because i i have found so much gold just in finding unsigned artists people that people don't know about and some of my friends think i'm crazy i'm like she can be a flop i don't care this is my favorite artist this is my song like yeah. i'm so that person <laughs> what's crazy is that like i like the weekend i always say like i love like um basement made sounds like I the, yeah, you know you yeah. can make it anywhere but I just always go for that person who like you know the teenager who's trapped in their mom's basement and all they want to do is make music that's yeah. actually like who the weekend was before his yeah. ish mm -hmm. blew up and it's so funny because he has like a few albums now and I still like I backtrack to trilogy earlier and kiss land and those are the two sounds that are most um like sound the most like what you have going on in your albums and then as he's gotten older and done his thing, like he's got more mainstream and it's gotten more like not so much Kiss Land and Trilogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's funny because I, like I said, I'm always going towards like that basement. Like I want to hear what you made before people were telling you what to do is kind of yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. You're like pure authentic sound. Right, and like the diary pages. <laughs> yes, yes. And that's that's definitely what my music is. I will say that it's it's almost like untouched by anybody else. It's almost down to a T, everything that I hear in my 
head and envision mm -hmm. what I want sonically. And so it, it is, it feels very um, vulnerable because it is, it's so me. It's like every single detail of, of, of it is of what I wanted it to sound like. So that's crazy that you even said that because I, I definitely agree. I feel the same way. With it's, it's, <laughs> it's beautiful. And I can tell that it's all of that. Um, so what, tell me about like, when you first started and you were getting your first single together, I'm very interested in yeah. the process of like, when you decided to kind of become that independent musician, it's something mm -hmm. I'm very like, uh, what's the word? Like, almost like obsessed with in a way, because I yeah, always yeah. say like, I cannot believe that like 10, 20 years ago, you mm -hmm. had to run around in New York City with a cassette or a yeah. CD and hope that someone would hear your song. Like that was the way to, be signed or or get yeah. a sample out or do a music yeah. and all that and when I was a teenager and I looked at other artists who were older th than me like that was that was the process you know what I mean you yeah. you packed up mm -hmm. to New York with your dollar in your pocket and yeah. you went around with your CD and you tried to hand it in right so yeah. when I started to realize in the past couple of years that we could independently create and upload from home it mm -hmm. it, it like I realized it was happening but then it took me a couple of years to register like I can do yeah. that. Like I, yeah. I kept seeing other people do it, and I was like, "Oh, that's just them. That's their life." And then it finally mm -hmm. hit me. Like in 2020 is when I dropped my first single and started my channel, and yes. I, that was my New Year's resolution. I was like, "I'm just gonna go for it," and I haven't looked back since. So I really want to know, like, what Congrats was that? On that? Thank you so much. <laughs> it's been, it's been and a all way. over you is a vibe, by the way. Don't think I'm not tuned in because <laughs> I totally am. Your music is a vibe. It's, it's a whole you. movie in and of itself. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm so glad you enjoy it. Thank you so much. That's awesome. I'm glad you heard it. <laughs> <laughs> but I would yeah. I want to know like what was like what was that moment like for you? Like when you realized like I have a talent, I have thoughts, I have feelings. I can put this out. Like, what was that yeah. like? How'd you go about it? You know what? It, it's almost like a two-part thing because what's funny enough is, you know, I, I did say I was in the military and things like that, but there were always these points in my military career where I would write music and record little demos on my computer and never really do anything with it, but just experiment with music. Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't until, like I said, with Anything Goes, I really just, I felt like it was doing something different than what some of my other writing previously was doing. And I said... I need to take this more seriously because this feels and sounds like something. And then I just started really going full force with my dream. But funny enough, Ultimate Classic, there's an artist on their name, Hila, which is a good friend of mine. His name is Steven, and he's an artist as well. And before I released my music, he had done it and kind of walked me through the steps of like what he did to release his music. Mm. And it so inspired me because just like you said, it seemed so out of reach. But then like I realized I can actually do this. Like, let me put this out and try it. And I just started making promises to myself when I turned 30. I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to release it on my 30th birthday. And we'll just see what happens. Even if that's the one thing I do, that's it. And then it just became something more and more and more and more and more over time. And then next thing you know, three years later, I have two EPs and an album written and out. And I'm like, wow, that was a lot of writing and a lot of my story that I put out. And if it does nothing else, I just love that I was able to transmute so much of what I was going through through that time into something that people can feel and is tangible and can live on forever. I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> it's, and, that's, and that's what you've done. And I'm so glad you continued because that's like, that's the scary part about independent artists is that you never know who you could have had and who you couldn't. It's all literally mm -hmm. about that person getting mm -hmm. up off their butt, writing the song, yeah. putting it out. So you yes. said you, you said you had a friend. Was was that friend involved in like in the production aspect and you mastering and you fine tuning? Like, what was the production behind the scenes like for your first single? So um, for the first single, what I was doing for a hobby um, originally was just kind of browsing beats online, like anything that would really stick to my spirit or sounds and melodies would start coming automatically if I heard something then I knew it was something that I would probably start writing to and so that's what I would do I would just start writing and so when I heard that anything goes instrumental I was like this is sickening like wait a minute I, I'm feeling something here and then I, I would write the songs and kind of go through it sonically everything that I'm kind of envisioning and then after that I, I reached out to local engineers that um, could do professional recording I've been so busy on the 
personal side to where I just knew that that intricate mixing and mastering and all that I couldn't do that personally so I had to you know set the funds aside to do all of that on a professional front but um, I found a guy that um, his name is Darren Russell and he works with American Music Studios and he is so awesome just because we kind of clicked instantly as far as what we heard sonically and the kind of things that we wanted to do. And he got my voice and, and knew how to make it sound right. And, and it was everything that I was hearing in my head and was practicing, but he was able to put that into life. And then, you know, after I would record with him, I'd be on the back end doing all of the vocal production. Like, hey, can you make sure this ad lib is here? And I want this right, act here. Because we know what we want. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I know exactly what I'm envisioning. So it needs to give that. <laughs> that is like so happy to be having this conversation because that's one of those things where like I go through this every day and it's so hard to yeah. not be able to vocally talk about this with someone. That, and that's yeah. exactly why we're here because mm -hmm. I have gone through that daily where like I have so yeah. many ideas and so many things I want to do, but right. I physically can't, like, I don't understand the mastering, like editing world. But when I tell you, I am trying so hard to teach myself because I do want oh, that's that. Right. Yeah, I want everything that I'm asking other people to do. I, at some point, want to just be able to do it myself. Yes. Slowly yes. and surely, as I've continued this process, I'm checking, you know, I'm checking that stuff off. Like my first single um, I had, it was co-produced and someone mm -hmm. worked much like your friend, how you were saying they were kind of with you. Yeah. The process. Um, yeah. So grateful for that person. Um, is a producer. Her name is B Ames and she yeah. helped write the song with me, helped create the beat and wow. literally like helped walk me through the process of mm -hmm. uploading it. And I couldn't be more grateful, but then I made it a point that my second single I would mm -hmm. do myself production and that's when yeah. I started making my own beats and really kind of getting in there a little wow. bit. Wow. Yeah. Cause wow. I, I didn't want to ask for so much anymore. <laughs> hold up, hold up. You have to stop right there because if those are your beats, they're sickening. Like I'm boo-boo gacking when I'm hearing these beats. I'm so serious. Like, wow. Yeah. So that... talent. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Yes. I mean, because it was like. The first time I did it, again, I wasn't 100% confident. So of course I was like, yeah. okay, I'm gonna collaborate with someone and do a single. But then the yeah, second yeah. time around, I feel like she prepared me so much and she was so open with all my questions wow. that by the time I was ready to do the second single, I was like, I think I can do this on my own. And I made the beat and then I started building it and then I added in a couple of moans and ad libs and then I added in lyrics and then I started writing it. I It was like, a, I just built it. And yeah. I'm, I'm so proud of that because I yes. can see where I came from in the first single and then you can see like where I've grown and everything. Yes. And so have you yeah. gotten into any beat making or production skills or do you like to do, are you more excited to do the writing process and collab with someone? You know what? I, I truly feel this in my spirit that that is a side of me that I have not fully tapped into like I want to like I remember as a kid I used to that was like one of my main passions like playing with beats and coming mm -hmm. up with everything that I was hearing in my head because to be honest I really haven't found any beats and instrumentations that really give some of the craziness that I hear in my head because I just I just know what I hear mm -hmm. and so I want to you're inspiring me by the way I just want you to know that you need to I truly that. want to dive into that yeah yeah you should. I think that you, you never know. It's, it's a really nice, relaxed feeling to go mm -hmm. into the program. And I use Logic Pro X, if you ever, okay. um, there's many different yeah. systems yeah. you can work with. Mm -hmm. I can recommend just because I'm working on it. And then if you get that and you have questions about it, I'm more than happy to chat Thank with you about you. it in our DMs. Yeah. But I use that program and you will just, it's such a relaxing feeling to strip away the lyrics mm -hmm. and the meaning yes. for just a minute and truly mm -hmm. feel the beat. And and I you're you're very like detailed and I feel like you'll be able to put in the energy that you put into your lyrics into your beat. Mm -hmm. so I highly recommend that you, Thank get, you. Into, you get into producing. Thank I could have swore yes. this stuff sounds so complete and so together. I could have swore <laughs> like you were doing it all. You know I wish I, so I beat truly, matches truly. the lyrics perfectly on all your yeah. songs as if you Thank made you. both. Yeah. Thank you. No, you know what it is? I, I have to fully be engulfed by that that production that I'm hearing when I'm writing. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't just give me like this instant flow of energy of creativity, then I know it didn't hit me instantly. And I don't 
want to write to something that I don't fully believe in that way, because then I feel like it won't touch authentically, you know, someone else in the same way. So I, I'm very deliberate when I do that kind of thing. But you just talking about the production side, I know that it would take my sound to a totally different dimension because aside from like hearing the lyrics of things that I write, I hear so many sounds in my, in my head and I know exactly what kind of beats I would love to, to create already. I don't even know if they have a genre right now to describe some of them because I just, I just hear things. I can't even really describe it, but I would love to explore that and to really take the time to sit down and do that. I, I really want to. And I think I should make that a goal in 2022. Truly, you have inspired me. I, I want you to know that like, that is so awesome to be able to hear that you were able to do that and grow so quickly. You know what I mean? Like, that's awesome. I, I really want to be able to. Yeah, that's like, that's my favorite thing is to, like I said, strip away everything else and you know, I relax, get my glass of wine, and then I'm just making yeah. it. And I probably have yeah. like 60 or 70, like, like made tracks, like, you know, uh, a little incomplete here and there, yeah, but a yeah. nice little start. So when I have an idea for a song, it's really nice to like match up the lyrics in my head to the beats that I already have. And I can now like, okay, yeah. oh, I made that tropical beat the other day. Oh, that'll go good with this song that I want to talk about. Like the other day I was writing a song about back it up on you in a club. And I was like, oh, that'll go wow. good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, yes. our, our genres are very yes. different. So. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm here for all of that energy. That is so me too. But um, no, I I want to do that. And you know what? We might have to talk offline because maybe I might want some of your beats. Are you like selling some of them? Because <laughs> wait a minute, no, I'm telling you, like your music is a vibe. Like oh, I, it was giving you. me that energy. Like okay, I need to get rid of those. <laughs> no I'm like I'm always open to like swapping collabing and like yeah any questions especially like if you are not comfortable asking or having them answered on here yeah yeah we're we're insta friends for life so whatever you need yeah to have, yeah. Um, yeah and I could definitely send you some stuff whatever you need like absolutely like I'm I'm open for all that that's also like the point of these conversations everything is to yeah, get okay. people like a little bit more comfortable with creative collabing Mm -hmm. because I've yeah. worked with a, a number of artists, but they're very quick, you know, to have their fee ready mm -hmm. to go, which I completely understand. But mm -hmm. every now and then, like in between the paid, uh, yeah. you know, in yeah. between the paid projects, yeah. I would literally genuinely like to just make like creative collabs. You know what I mean? Yeah. So definitely. Without all of that business stuff. Yeah, because sometimes that gets in the way and there's so much yeah. logistics to it all. And I'm just like, can we just like make a song yeah. for fun? And and I realize that like that's hard to ask because a lot of people like or some people do this full time or are trying to do it full time. So it truly mm -hmm. is um, about making that coin, which like that's a lot about like this the, the I talk about on this channel is like content creation, but more so like being a YouTuber or being a music artist and and surviving off of that. So how are you with that? Are you a full-time artist right now? Or are you are you half and half? Because there's all different types of artists. Yeah. They there are, and you know what? I am so, um, I don't want to say the word envious is not right. I'm, I'm more so inspired, I should say, by artists that are full-time artists because I feel like it just enhances the art that much more when you're able to fully, fully commit to it. I'll be honest and say I had gotten out of the military and I'm still a government contractor full-time. Like I still have a normal nine to five job you know get what i mean like, get those benefits yeah right okay i still need this coin i need to fund the recording okay so i need something that's bringing in something on the side um and then you know i just last year graduated with a master's degree so i i've been juggling so much on a personal front to where like i always felt like in some ways, the art is somewhat sacrificed because I'm just not able to allocate all of the time or energy I would love to be able to do. It's not even a hobby of mine because it's number one. Like, I love music. It's it's everything to me. But because I have to fuel that dream, there's so much other things I have to allocate my time and energy to. You know what I mean? Uh, no. Just surviving this damn pandemic at this point. <laughs> yeah, times are, are really... Yeah. Or they're different right now. So that's a that's a weird question to ask because there are people who yeah. like who were being an artist full time and then were unable yeah. to continue that when the pandemic happened. Yeah. And then on, yeah. the, on the flip side, it, it's the other way around too. There are people who were yeah. in the live world and then um, when the pandemic happened, um, mm -hmm. dove into the artist world. That's that's pretty much my story. I actually like saved up wow. to leave my job to become a full time creator. 
And right wow. when we did that, the pandemic hit. So uh, yeah, but it was like, it was a bittersweet thing because what ended up happening with the whole YouTube thing is that people were home more. So yeah. a bit of videos was were skyrocketing and I was able to grow yeah. faster. So, you know, there's yeah. ups and downs. There's always a blessing. Yeah. So it is what it is. But yeah, I always like to ask that question because I know for so many people, like, do you feel like that's like your end goal or do you feel like you're oh, yeah. with like, making music and it being like a side hustle versus okay <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do what I have to do you know what yeah. I mean because yeah. I just I and then because I was in the military you establish a certain life that you have to maintain financially now after a certain point and so just realistically it wasn't something that I was able to just fully en engulf myself in which I want to so badly and will and plan to and it's gonna happen I'm speaking it but you know what all of that content creation thing you're split like I really want to do all that from having my own YouTube channel where me and my husband and I talk about things that couples go through Q and A's and, and things like that because I, I just feel like my life um is a story that I would want to tell you know what I mean it has ups and downs I'm not perfect by any means but I'm just a transparent person and I would love to share that on so many different platforms and in different ways music is definitely my first and, and full love so I'm definitely going to continue i'm recording now releasing a deluxe for my album dream world coming soon so oh, I'm oh, still working. When? wait when <laughs> <laughs> with more tracks yes yes so i've been i'm recording and you know what i haven't put out any music in almost a year so i i really am believing in the music that i'm writing right now like i've i've gone somewhere different and i'm excited about it and i want to give a different dimension to dream world so it's gonna have like a deluxe b-side on it and i'm i'm recording that now so oh yeah oh my gosh I, yeah i can't believe it's been a year and that goes to say even more how like timeless your tracks are because wow. I, I feel like I just found Infinity yesterday. Like I was, <laughs> I was listening to your tracks, like to get ready, like for the interview, like just to get in Dorian mode. And yes, I was yes. like, why is this? Is, I feel like this is the first time I'm hearing all of these. And it's not. Oh like, my gosh. You know, these, are, these are songs that are on my, you know, the repeated Spotify playlist. You're yeah. Like, you're like my whole repeated Spotify <laughs> 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 Because it's just like- I live. Like if I, okay, like I have a boy over, I want to get sexy, Ooh, Dorian yes. song. Okay, like I want to yeah. take a shower and relax by myself. Oh, Dorian song. Oh, I'm angry yes. and I want to relax. Oh, Dorian song. <laughs> oh, I'm happy and I want to like be cute and just feel like excited. Oh, Dorian song. <laughs> like, <Yes>. it's, <laughs> it's just been like my go-to. Oh my so. goodness. <laughs> Thank you so much. You really don't know how much that means to me. And you know what? I'm just somebody that feels so many different moods. And so I didn't want to box myself into anything because if I'm feeling something and I feel it just so passionately, I'm going to release that some kind of way. Yeah. Ends up being writing a song or something. So I, I really want to share all the different sides of, of me. And I'm tapping into some different stuff too with, with this upcoming music. I was going to say, so like, where are we going with the sound? I know you come from that loving sound, but um, yeah. what I listening to earlier? Oh my gosh, I can't remember the name of it, but I was like literally going through your mm -hmm. even trying to find things I haven't heard. And yeah, it was like yeah. impossible because I like, I <laughs> so, yeah. but I found I one that I didn't hear like as much and it was, mm -hmm. actually, if I can go find it real quick. Hmm. Um, from, from my album, Dream World? No, I was going, I went back to uh, Songs in the Game. Yeah. Who was that? Okay. Remain okay. the same. Oh, remain, remain the same. Remain the same took me, I was like, do, 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 going through my favorite tracks. And I was like, have I heard this so much? And I put it on, I was like, oh, we're doing something <laughs> different. And we're remain the same. And like, yeah. Oh, will there be more of that? Like that kind of like upbeat love sound? Yes. Yes. I definitely want to give more bop, more knock. Um, and I, and I love that kind of sound, you know what I mean? Um, I'm going to be trying to do not necessarily rapping, but like a speed singing, you know, how like Beyonce used to do oh, in the world. Yes. Yeah. So something like that, trying to play in like some Island vibes. I'm definitely going to be trying to a lot of different stuff. I love like digital sounding music. So I have one that sounds like it's straight out of Sega Genesis or something. So what? it's, yeah. Oh, you, might have to throw, you might have to throw me on that one. I love yeah. I, that's like that whole fembot space. Yeah. Yes. I just had sex yes. with Alien. Like that's like yes. my sound. Like. Yes, 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 yes. I love it. Come on. 
I'm who are here. you like um who are you listening to right now like are you into like what are you listening to to because I know there's probably a difference I know it is for me to what inspires your sound versus like I said earlier like what you listen to for fun yeah so what are those two for you Okay, so I, I, some of them are the same. Uh, I think in the pandemic, I've been very conscious about listening to artists that do inspire me. I just feel like I need to listen to music that continues to lift me. Right, we don't have a lot of time, so if we're going to listen, we need to like... Yeah, to yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I need yeah. to enjoy this. But the Weekends album that just came out, I love it. I love the concept of it, how it's like its own radio station. It's its own world. Like, he is just phenomenal and I, it, go, I it went back a little bit like i said earlier it's going mm -hmm. back to that sound a little bit a little bit more of that yes. town he still makes yes. it into his mainstream ish but yes. i heard more of his old sound in this album yes. than i did yes. in any of the other albums for sure yes i feel like he dug back into an old bag with this album i, I love that i'm always listening to michael jackson i mean he's one of my favorite all-time artists period so He's such an inspiration because he's one of the most authentic um, artists as far as like just pouring their soul into everything that they do. Um, and you can hear that and feel that in his music. I definitely, you know, grew up in the 90s. So 90s female R&B is the anthem to my life. Brandy, Monica, Destiny's Child, all of those. Aaliyah, I'm listening to all that all the time. You know what I mean? So and they inspire me because I, I grew up on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, and it's so funny because <laughs> I was going through your album, like I said, like the past couple of days, like again, mm -hmm. that, that's normal for me. I, I'm always listening, but I was really trying to get into it the past couple of days, <laughs> see if I could find what I haven't heard. And while I was listening, it, it's so weird you said that because it took me back to when I was a preteen, dog yeah. in the hell out of yeah. um, Writings on the Wall, Destiny's okay, Child. Yeah. That Iconic. is the vibe you give me with your Thank song, you. and I love wow. that. Yeah, and I love that, like, you're able to comfortably go back to that sound, but then yeah. bring it up to a more modern take. Like, I feel like I hear a Destiny's Child beat, but it's also, like, very 2021. Yeah, so, like, oh like, my gosh. Nice. Yeah. I love that you're saying that, because that's the kind of stuff that I, I go to when I creatively feel something. I'm like, this is reminiscent of something that I love, and it yes. tends to always be in that 90s, 80s, R&B, pop world, because it's just, that's some of the greatest eras of music, period, anyway. I'm right so. there with you. I'm like 90% yeah. inspired by like the Britney, Christina, and think like yes. that pop era. It, mm -hmm. I mean, I have branched off of that in so many ways, like ballroom mm -hmm. and dance and, and Broadway. I've even yes. sang on stage and over 20 musicals. I have a lot of Broadway experience wow. too. Wow. Yeah. So I have like, a, I love so many different genres, but when yeah. people ask me like, what's my core or what do I go mm -hmm. back to? Mm -hmm. That 90s era, that pop Period. era. And then Period. right on the corner of that was that R&B, my, you know, my radio, yes. my Usher, my Alicia. Yes, Usher, ooh. Yeah, I, look, I grew up in a biracial mm -hmm. household, so I was like, mm -hmm. one day with my Britney album, the next yeah. day with my Usher <laughs> album, and that's how yes. I always got, that's how oh, I always don't play. Britney Spears and Christina slayed me the moment I saw them, okay? I fell in love, like, who are these girls? I still want to write a song comparable to, or inspired by Hit Me Baby One More Time. I'm sorry, that song hits me every time I hear it, like it's brand new. Oh, okay. I get slayed by it. So, yes, it's I'm amazing. totally. Yeah, and I'm always, like, I'm constantly, like, luckily, like, you're so lucky that you create, like, radio friendly beautiful love songs because <laughs> like I feel like I I have my heart and my passion just as much as you do in music yeah, yeah. but it's just that I portray just a different side like that that feeling that mm -hmm. you know baby one more time gave me and, mm -hmm. and slave for you gave me and yes. Marie, like Christina gave me that I feel sexy, I feel confident, I can do anything. That's mm -hmm. the vibe of my sound. And sometimes it falls yes. under like, oh, you're you're pop or you're trying to be sexy or you're trying to do this yeah. or it's nasty or or it's cursed. Yeah. No, it's not. This is me no, like, trying it's to music. Me feel confident, you know? Yeah. So like, I, I'm so envious of you that like, you're on more of a like a, a playing field where you'll you're accepted more like it's hard enough as an lgbt artist to be accepted in this world but you just have even more of a chance because your ish is radio friendly and i have no regrets <laughs> going down that yeah road yeah, yeah. Of, of, of confident pop bops but it's, yeah. such, it's such a difference because yeah 
yeah like you have that opportunity to really like your stuff is so radio friendly which is oh my goodness thank you so much yeah that's really important for the music world like that's something I had to stop caring about because I literally cannot write a radio friendly song for the life of me like when I tell you I have sat down to create one and every Mm -hmm. time it's juices this against the wall (laughs) and then when I'm done I'm like okay, well, I feel good from it. So right, <laughs> right. That, I got yeah. my life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I totally feel you. But you know what's so funny what you're saying? I feel exactly what you're saying on the opposite end. I am not, okay, I was, I was raised in the church. So I am a little bit of a prude just by nature. I can't <laughs> help it, but I'm, I'm not, you know, a stick in the mud. So yeah. like the music that I write, I definitely am conscious about. And I do think about it deliberately. And my nieces and nephews listen to Mm-hmm. Can they sing along to this? Because I remember as a kid always being like, wow, what is that song? Like, I want to sing along to it. And, and I would love that feeling to happen to other kids these days because I just feel like a lot of the music that's put out there that I'm hearing these kids gravitate towards, what, what can they take away from, you know, the message in it? You know what I mean? Like, that, that's what I always think about. Like, what, what are they thinking when they hear this music, what is the takeaway? What is it doing to their soul? So when I create that kind of music, I'm definitely deliberate in that, but I am dying to cuss in a song. I'm dying to <laughs> like, you know, but I mean like just put exactly what I'm feeling out there in like an R-rated thing. And I think I definitely am going to at one point just put like a parental advisory whole body of work <laughs> where it's just like Dorian, he's talking his shit. Like, I'm sorry, I have to do it. I have to Your get Rihanna it. Your Rihanna rated R album. Yeah, something because it's just like it's, it's in me as well. So when I see people that are so free and don't have those boxes that they, you have to put yourself in sometimes just to try to appease to someone, I am amazed of that because I'm like, you're so brave, you're so liberated, you're so like, you're just feeling exactly what you want to feel and you don't yeah. give a damn about what anybody else thinks. And I wish I had more of that, definitely. Yeah. So it's, it's funny because I feel the same way, just on yeah, the opposite end. It's hard because I feel like I'm constantly defending myself, my craft, my art, my lyrics. And then like, I have to compare myself to, well, I, I don't compare, but people will compare it to, to you know, moments like WAP, where it's like you said, where people are like, how is this at the Grammys? How is this so big? Why is this all over the radio? It's just talking about this, this, and that. And like, but it's I'm a always, mood. Yeah, like I'm always just like defending those those rap stars and like Megan and yeah. Cardi because I'm like, this made me feel good. Like if I'm in a depression, yeah. WAP got me out of bed a couple of yeah. times. So okay. don't sit here and say like it's just sex, it's just this, no. it's just you know what I mean. And that's what mm-hmm. a lot of people we're saying so not only was I defending other artists in that genre but I it just gave me the right away too it was like this is the yeah. music that makes me feel good yeah. so this is what I'm yeah. going to create and anyone who wants to talk about it like that's why I created open yeah. conversations like this so that people yeah. realize like it's really not about like fully sexually charged it really does come back to the confidence and for me like yeah. I'm someone who didn't really truly feel comfortable in my own skin until recently and a lot of people like will not usually understand that but it's because of music and mm-hmm. like that that power that it gave me that I got to where I am with my company. wow yeah yeah wow so wow. If I can pass that on a little bit and explain that yes. to someone like then I'm good but the people who don't get it I just I keep it moving because I don't I don't have anything to prove you know what I mean like no not at all but thank you for even just having this conversation with me because it adds such a dimension of truth that I was already feeling to your music like it it energized me and I was like why like why am I feeling like I'm just ready like it's just giving me everything I need in that moment and I was laying down on the futon and I'm like which I'm about to get up like it's (laughs) it's boom boom cat time like that's what it is yeah no I want people to feel sexy and that's not again like that's not coming from a place of like sex is everything sex sells wear this do that no that's not what it is it's Mm -hmm. about like feeling your best at any age at any size at any race yes. this is about yeah. waking up and feeling good and like I can't yeah. have to explain this to people like people yeah. hear a good beat and a little did did that and see a little crop top and some titties hanging out and yeah. they're like oh that's that's too much give it a second they and go see crazy. What it can do. yeah see what right. it can do for you see how it can make you feel so yeah thank you for being uh open yes. to that and laying and feeling your oats <laughs> yeah truly I'm so serious and like I said I, I'm almost envious of that level of freedom because it, it has to feel liberating to just 
just not give a damn about all of that. Like, I I love that I do create, you know, commercial friendly music because it does feel like I can have opportunities. But at the same time, that, like I said, there's there's so many different moods to me. And I feel like as artists, period, you always have different channels that you turn to when you're feeling a different mood. And I think there's nothing wrong with with feeling your oodles and noodles, like period. And there's a time and space for everything. I was probably extremely lucky to uh, uh, have my drag persona, Jasmine Anastasia, and that's yeah. where all my music is released through. And it's yeah. so crazy because I wrote I wrote the song and I literally uploaded it to my YouTube channel. And that's kind of how the channel began as I was like, oh, I need to have a music video. And then once the yeah. music video was on there, I was like, oh, well, let me do other music related things and see if anyone yes. cares, you know what I mean? Yes. But like, that's mm-hmm. where it all began. And I'm so grateful for that. Like it's, it's been- and look how fast it's grown just by the belief of, of something. Yeah. And when you fully uh, put your time into it, like I said, I, I want to be able to put more time into the things that I, I really believe in. And I'm actually, I'll be honest and say, I feel like it's a bit of a struggle with me. I, I'm also like a people pleaser. Yeah. So if my phone rings and it's Dorian, hey, can you do this? Can you do that? It's like I can put the music down to appease somebody else. Mm-hmm. And I have to get better with that. I want to be able to, to fully dive in, into some of these things that I really want to. In 2022, I got to make these promises to myself. Yeah, I mean, well, let's get into that a little bit. Um, boundaries is a yeah. huge thing with me and my my yeah. artist journey. Like even, again, going back to that year of 2020 when I, I wrote the first song and I uploaded it to the channel, that right. experience of deciding I was going to do this, that I was going to create videos and, and be a mm-hmm. creator, I had to really take a step back from the social life, the, you know, the dating life, and to this day, two years in the game, nothing's changed. So there's yeah. a huge sacrifice that people do not talk about when it comes to being a full-time creator. And maybe being a creator, you can get away with juggling a couple of things, but going for that full-time status of trying to make a living off of it, that's where I feel like I have almost lost friends. I have had family members get upset with me. Like people have gotten very like because I'm, I'm busy like yeah busy. Yeah, like yeah yeah and like I and I like it so that's the other mm-hmm. thing like I have I'm booked from A to Z and Period. I don't want to be bothered I Period. don't want to be pulled away and luckily I have a handful of friends who are like who have stuck by me but they when I it. tell you like I, I hear what you're saying with that we're like the you know those boundaries you want to have more time to do what you want to do because I have almost created that space for me. Like I had no choice. Like I would not be where I was today if I didn't say, no, I'm not coming out. No, I'm not doing this. Like I had to literally set boundaries. So my advice for you for that is to do it because yeah. what you create from mm-hmm. the nose you give to the outside mm-hmm. world is, mm-hmm. is really beautiful. And what's even more wonderful that than that is the people who are left standing after all those no's, those are, that's your tribe. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because yeah. I'm not just doing this to be cute. Like this is no. mental stability. This is yes. financial freedom. This is yes. what makes me happy. So if I'm telling you all that, you know, I'm not just making a video to make the time go by. I'm doing this no. for, my future, for my friends, for my family. So the people who understand that and who have let me do that, they mm. will always have my heart. So yeah. I would hate for you to have that problem because you're you're a creator. You're a creator and you're an artist. And for you to be held back in any way is not okay because I want my songs from you. So <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I'm glad you made me laugh because you was you was hitting real deep and it, it was about to be some tears in a second because it is so true. And I think that that's one of the things that I I don't want to say I have regrets because I think everything happens for a reason, but Like I said, I'm a people pleaser by nature. I just have always been that type of person. My parents are those type of people. Like I said, growing up in the church, you, that's just what you do. You're you're of a service to people. And so whenever someone's asking for something, whether it's big or small, I just tend to say yes. And I will put something to the back burner of myself for the sake of someone else. And I realized that it is like now, like it's been a year, like we said, you know, since I put out a project for an album that I released and I do have regrets that I could have pushed things a lot harder in this year of of 2021 that just passed of course I have some personal things that happened but it's because I was juggling so much personally it was hard for me to be able to give what I feel like I need to give when I'm diving into that music side of myself and so for 2022 I really did make deliberate 
decisions to say, no, I'm going to be more conscious about saying no and setting certain boundaries and just not even allowing certain conversations because like you, I'm definitely empathic into where like energy just sticks to me. And if someone is negative or is complaining or they're just scrolling on social media talking about stupid stuff and like low vibrational things sometimes, if I'm in a creative space, it brings me down. And it's just like, it's a hard battle to fight sometimes, you know what I mean? Just juggling all of that. Because when you're so vulnerable in writing and recording, you have to be like really able to do that and pour yourself into it. And when you're like feeling weak or down or, you know, just investing in someone else, it can be really hard. I want to be able to do so much more than just music. I want to cook on my YouTube channel and, and do whatever I want on my YouTube channel. You know what I mean? Like I, I want to be able to put my spirit out there for people because Guys, you're gonna make me I, I, now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I want to be able to put my spirit out there for people, and I, and I just want to spread love that kind of way. And so, thank you for even having this conversation with me because I, I really am inspired. I truly, truly am, and I I know what I need to do. And there's certain things that I probably just needed to hear from a, another mouth. Um, so thank you. You're you're so welcome. But I also want to say, like, <laughs> for that year or for that gap or for that couple of months whatever it is that you were distracted mm -hmm. or you were going through personal issues, financial issues, worldly pandemic issues, whatever yes. it is yeah. pulling at your world, mm -hmm. please know that that's okay. Like things happen yeah. and all yeah. I need for you to do is remember the experience and put mm -hmm. it into your music. That's it. Like yeah. time can go by. Yeah. It's just up to you to take all those experiences and put them right back out into your art. But it's totally okay for yeah. what happened to you in this past year. This was a rough year for everybody, Yeah. Like, period. So if you weren't able to put out what you wanted to put out or do what you wanted to do, that's mm -hmm. okay, especially since your discography is bomb. So like, it's not like you're not playing <laughs> there, you know what I mean? And when, oh, thank yeah, you. When, stuff like, when you have like a Spotify page like that, you can take some time to <laughs> create, you know? So don't ever be afraid to to take your real life experiences let them sink in and then yeah. wait and come back you know there should yeah. don't ever feel that rush or anything like that mm -hmm. um and you then, know how it is when you're like hard on yourself about something though like you're just very like oh, yeah. your own worst critic sometimes and it's like okay chill it's not and, that i mean the things i'm telling you right now i have i've had to tell myself yeah <laughs> legit like my 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 boyfriend passed away in october and that was like one of those things where i had to be like oh, we might need some time. Like, you know what I mean? Like I have to really be like, as hard as I want to hit the hay and as crazy as I am of a creator and even to make things even better is that he was my number one supporter. So even though he was gone in my head, he was like, keep, keep going. Like, what are you, yeah. why are you yeah. crying? Like, yeah. make, the, make the video, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, wow. I kept hearing, yeah, wow. I kept hearing him. So even in moments like that, where I was experiencing tremendous grief and loss, I, you know, I couldn't step away as long as I probably should have, but I mm -hmm. did like force myself to take that week to let it sink in. But again, like in my case, it was so different because I had went over to his house so often and we talked about the channel specifically so much that I literally felt his spirit. Like after that week was up, I felt his spirit being like, so your goals are waiting. Like, yeah. what we know? doing? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, I like to wow. tell people like, yeah, it can get bad. It can get dark. So you know, you might not be able to take as much time as you want to or vice versa, but try to take something, you know what I mean? Take that moment and then come back to what you want to do. And don't be so hard on yourself. And again, these are all things that I yeah. have to tell myself because yeah. we're great. We're so good yeah. at what we do yeah. and the content will come out and the art will yeah. be made, but we have to also be sane for yes. that. And so, yes. so remember right. that, yeah, mm -hmm. keep it together and just, you know, <laughs> lay it out, yeah. You are such a light. Thank you for that word, by the way. But no, it's it's so true. I, I definitely am, am like being very conscious in 2022. It, I have to move a little differently, a little more firm, a little more strong and a little more ambitious and a little more savage. I hate to say like I sometimes I'm, I'm a little sweet and soft and nice to certain people. And it's like, y'all get the other side real quick. Like I have to cut some stuff off at the bud so I have time for what I need to make yeah. time for. Yeah. Oh, and you yeah. are more than uh, capable and prepared to do it all. Um, in terms of YouTube, this can be either on this chat 
or not, but I have tons like that is that's what we do here on this channel. Mm -hmm. uh, tons of coaching creator content ideas specifically for artists to grow because your YouTube channel is another form of social media to reach your fans. And mm -hmm. I'm a fan. And when I tell you, like, I, saw, I went to your YouTube channel earlier to check it mm -hmm. out and I did see like your songs on there and everything. And mm -hmm. again, like as a fan, like if you had a little video up of you and your man going yeah. to the carnival yeah. or, or yeah. making a video together, I would watch it yeah. because yeah. what ends up happening with that, and it, it sounds so crazy too, like, oh, if someone likes my music, why would they watch me cooking a steak? Well, what ends mm -hmm. up happening is yeah. like, your music yeah. and who you are in your regular personal life really mm. tie into each other and that was yes. I started to use to my advantage with my channel is like you know I would post like you know maybe like um a reaction video to an artist right and then like they would do well or whatever and people would kick in I would maybe I would get upset and cry over it something like that but then the, yeah, next, yeah. the, the week before was maybe like the week I got into like a, a fight with like my boyfriend or something but what would happen is I would vlog about it so it got to this point where like I would get to a video, a reaction video or a music video or something I was doing on my channel and emotions would come out and people would be like, oh, okay, that's because last week this and that happened and he showed us. Like, so it ends up giving like this storyline mm -hmm. for your fans. Yeah. To see, like yeah. where you're at mentally. And then, and you know, it get, and then you release a song and it's like, okay, he just released Infinity. Oh, okay. That's because he's like been in love this whole past year. And like, he's like, yeah. oh, man. And, and been in yeah. the pandemic, like the song mm -hmm. will match up with the yeah. blog content on your channel. Not to mention the uh, YouTube channel is another form of income. And as content creators, yeah. artists, musicians, we all know that we can't, you know, if if I were to just do music, we all know we can't rely on Spotify. No, oh, man. Spotify. If I were to just no. do YouTube, everyone knows who's monetized on YouTube, you can't just rely on ad revenue for YouTube. Wow. So, mm -hmm. so much you want to be able to do. And in your case, you can do it all. So. Again, like never feel scared. So to, much. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, especially YouTube, because that's like, I got you. Yeah. I'm I putting myself you. out there. And I, I appreciate that because I probably will be asking some questions. But I want to do it like I will sit and play video games. I'm a gamer. So like I would sit and review right. video games. I just bought the new Pokemon game today. Like I I would put that on my YouTube. So much different types of content. You know what I mean? Like I just want to touch someone with love. You know what I mean? And, and just kind of yeah. make my channel that kind of vibration and, and all of those different avenues try to explore. Yeah, that, so. I would watch it. Like that's my that's my favorite part. And that's what people love about my channel is like when I'm not when I'm not doing music or I'm not doing YouTube and I just have like yeah. a day out with friends, I'll film it and I'll show them. And they love it because they love to see me like outside of my element and doing different things. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure it would aim for you. Like they would they would love to see you and everything that you, whatever you want to do. And I'm a gamer too. So I yeah. understand yeah. all of that. <laughs> I'm like right there with you. I did not get the new Pokemon, but it's like <laughs> the thing is if I if I get that right now, you can just forget mm -hmm. anything getting done right now. That's the problem. See, <laughs> see, now I'm feeling guilty. Like, wait a minute. No, no, no because you deserve to you deserve to relax at the same time. But yeah. Pokemon in particular is very soul, like it'll suck you in and you're like, I'll get back to work when I'm done the game. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, that's so true. Yeah, I definitely, I need to get on this ball. Man. Yeah, I'll, because I'll especially like on that path of being a, a, a full time creator and not just a musician, like you could set up your, you, and like this, again, like this is for anyone listening and also for you, like this is not an overnight thing. Like, you do not set up a YouTube channel and a Twitch account and then make money tomorrow. This is something no. that, you know, you set up as time goes on, you continue to make your music, you continue to make your life, you put time individually into the channel, into the Twitch, into your music. And if you do that, if you touch upon each here and there, they will mm -hmm. all grow. Like, you know what I mean? And what ends up happening, like the beautiful thing with the internet is you, you interchange them. You know what I mean? When you're on Twitch and you're gaming, mention your songs, mention your channel. Yeah. When you're on your yeah. channel, mention your Twitch, mention your songs. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you're doing something, yeah. promoting your music or anything like that, mention your Twitch, mention your YouTube, mm -hmm. you know? You get the yeah. opportunity to kind of like find something for everyone. And it's really cool because there might be someone who like loves your music, but might like gaming more. And they might mm -hmm. be like, they might be gun ho for your Twitch nights or your yeah. nights with your man. Mm -hmm. Like you truly never know what you're yeah. you want, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's worth it. I love that. Yes.
I, I, I'm feeling that it's really a testimony from your end. So I, I'm feeling it and I'm, I'm going to do it. I, I really have to. I yeah. Have to. It's worth diving into. I've been so proud of like, um, like mainstream artists, like jumping on that bandwagon because I don't understand how, how, they, how they don't. Like it always like blew my mind. Like I was so proud of Megan Thee Stallion when she started her, um, her hot girl series on, on YouTube. Mm-hmm. When, you're that, when you're that big of a star, and you mm-hmm. decide to upload your workouts or a cute little, she uploads like five minute vlogs. She calls them like hottie vlogs. Really? Yeah. Okay. And the vlogs are in like the hundred thousands of views. And, you know, they say you don't make money on YouTube or whatever. But when you're getting those type of views, you do. Yes, you are. Right? Yeah. So, That's and, just extra coin for her. Right. And I'm like, I don't know who her team is or who told her she should do that. But like, I applaud them because yeah. it's, and I watch it religiously because I love Megan yeah. Thee Stallion and the yeah. only thing I love more than her music is her body. And what does she show yeah. on her YouTube channel? All the yeah. hot workouts, all the hottie squats. So I'm sitting yeah. there like, get my Megan body. Like what? Well, like, I know that's right. <laughs> Look, I might have to tune in. I need them knees. Okay. It's so good. And she's so real. And then it, it yeah. reminds you like, oh my gosh, like we do want to like, you know, I obviously love like makeup Megan, booty shaking Megan, on stage Megan. Yeah. But I didn't realize how much I would love Megan behind the scenes until I saw it. So that might mm-hmm. be your situation too, where people are like, man, I love his music. And then like, you're, you're, you can, you know, you can speak, you can carry yourself well. So for people to like yeah. your channel and like your vlogs, that won't be like shocking. Like I could definitely see that happening for you. Thank you so much. No, I, I definitely, I, I feel that way too, without, you know, talking too much about myself or anything but I I just know I am the type of friend that tends to be the shoulder that people cry on and I'm like sometimes I need to just maybe put something out for the masses so that I'm not dealing with some of the same things so much on a personal front so I I really want to figure out creative ways to kind of do that kind of thing yeah no YouTube is perfect because I run mine kind of like a variety channel so that kind of gives me Mm. the opportunity to Whatever movie comes along that I want to talk about, I'll talk about it. Yeah. If a song comes out that I want to react to or talk about it, I'll talk about it. And yeah, I've been very like selective to pick things that like represent me and my brand and that I know will spark an interest in me because that's where you'll get the best like reaction. Like if I do something that I don't want to do, I'm not going to yeah. do it. You know what I mean? So yeah. I yeah. definitely try to like pick topics, pick videos that represent who I am and just and like kind of like explain myself and and even like with videos like this and conversations like this like anyone who is a fan of my channel or has been a subscriber for a while like Mm -hmm. this gives them a whole new outlet to why I I think the way I do why my songs sound the way they sound and Mm -hmm. it's so important for me to keep on like giving myself a backstory otherwise people will just kind of like make it up for you (laughs) so like that's true yeah you have to like be careful with that like I didn't know what was going on with your love life before you told me. And now that you told yep. me, like, I can see it and I can mm-hmm. picture it and now I know. But mm-hmm. when you don't know, you just kind of like speculate. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah. give yeah. people that yeah. picture, you know what I mean? And yeah, about all of that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. Oh, I got to do it. I got to. You got it. So how is um how's like your family with with your with everything that you do and and with your life and songs? I would I would assume I mean everyone comes a, a different situation, but I would assume like they're so proud of your songs. <laughs> like I oh would... oh my gosh! So the dual side of my life, I should say, is that I've been incredibly blessed to find love. I I love my husband and I love my my family that I've now married into. Um, <laughs> and I am very close with my family that I grew up with. However, they, like I said, I grew up in the church and they are not, not, not about my lifestyle. Um, and they tie my music into it, which, you know, in ways rightfully so, because my story is very interwoven, I guess, into the lyrics and what I write and sing about. And so I guess in their minds, they can't separate that's the talent or the story or whatever from my personal life and so you know of course that they're happy that I'm chasing my own dreams but on a personal front we're still getting through the, the mud right now with them I just accepting you. certain things yeah it's, it's I don't know very- why but I thought it would be the opposite I thought you were going to tell me that possibly like maybe they weren't accepting or whatnot but 
the music they love because your sound is you know like i've been saying this whole conversation your sound is universal your sound is radio friendly yeah. your sound is mainstream if it wasn't for Thank us you. sitting here and oh talking about our men like i wouldn't know about you should yeah you know what i mean like wow. yeah <laughs> and that i would i i would have thought that that's what that that's where their mind would be would be like okay well, like because some parents when when their child is different or whatnot in any yeah. type of way that would be like their way out it'd be like okay like you might be gay but at least you make some bangers and they don't and they yeah. don't sound gay like no. i could see a parent saying that is what i'm saying like yeah. i don't i don't care what like i said like i'm here for the rated r moment that dorian could have in the future and i'm here <laughs> for the mainstream what's going on yeah. in the but I, yeah. I just would have thought that they might have been a little bit more appreciative that you weren't yeah. acting out just yet. Like your music yeah. is still yeah. so like it's, it's like it's somewhat you know church friendly. Like yeah. <laughs> some of it is like it, yeah. it's some of them are spiritually written in that way. You know what I mean? But you know maybe they are and just you know not as vocal about it. I um, have gotten to a place in, within myself to where I just had to have peace about certain things when it comes to that. Where it's like sometimes you have to be your own cheerleader. Um, and I think just because I believe so much in what I do and I truly feel in my spirit that it's a gift of mine, that gives me a sense of peace. Like, okay, I, I still am going to keep moving forward without certain levels of support. It's hard. You know, it definitely is one of those things that I was talking about just making, you know, this past year very difficult for me. But I believe, you know, things happen for a reason and, you know, troubles don't last always just like my song says you know what I mean so I I am faithful for the future um but yeah it's it's not sunshine and rainbows on on my biological side now with my parents so they love it I'm always at they're always asking you know when are you doing this when are you doing that I love this I love that so it balances out you know what I mean so I, I'm thankful for that I'm glad you found that I feel like in some yeah. ways like God sent that to you. Like he said, yeah. we need to get we need to get someone in here. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and like thank God you have that because like we think we don't need like family support. Like, oh, I'm gonna just do it. I'm gonna just do it. But mm -hmm. you want something, you know what I mean? Like I know yeah. for me, like the minute I finish a song or a video, like my mom knows right now that I'm doing this interview. And wow. like, before she texts wow. me, like, yeah. Hi she'll, mom. Yeah, <laughs> she'll be watching. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because like I was like, I told her today, like I was like, oh, I'm doing interview time with Dorian. And I sent her, um, I sent her I do and ultimate classic just Ooh, to her an idea ah! of like, why I was mm -hmm. obsessed. And then mm -hmm. like five minutes before I went on, she was like, Good luck in your interview. I was like, thank you. Like, so oh, for me, it was like yeah she always like i always think like if no one listens to the song or no one watches my video i'll always mm -hmm. have that one view so yeah. i'm like on the opposite yeah. spectrum of that so i know yeah. how how nice it is to have that support so i'm glad you have it in one way shape or form and it comes in different forms yeah. like, it doesn't have yeah. to be your biological family like loving and supporting you like mm -hmm. other people around the world can aid with that as well yeah. that's another thing you get like from youtube like when you build that subscriber base they become mm -hmm. more like family and it becomes like people kind of um, like yeah cheering you on about your life and you have the opportunities to do vlogs and talk about your music talk about how you feel yeah. talk about love and these people yeah. are like there for every step of the way and it's, it's i love that yeah it's been like so beautiful because luckily like i have the family to fall back on but if i didn't i would be like mm -hmm. immersed in my subscribers mm -hmm. i have like moms and grandmoms who watch the channel and they'll comment and be like grandma says hi like I'm a, I'm a wow. seven-year-old this or 80-year-old that, but I love the channel. So, like, I've made, like, family members, like, on the channel. So, it's, like, it happens that way, too. It's really wow. Beautiful. Yeah. That's such a blessing. No, I love that. I love to hear that. That that inspires me even more just because you do. You really want that level of love, of just unconditional love. And sometimes you just need people in your corner to cheer you on sometimes. Yeah. Like, hey, I see you. I'm proud of you. Keep going. So, definitely. I'm upset. Yeah. Yeah. So what um what backing up to uh your songs and and mm -hmm. the production of them, what is yeah. like your full like process? Do you do you have that beat first? Do you have lyrics in a journal that you match with the beat? Um or like mm -hmm. vice versa? Like how does that work for you? Yeah. It, well, sometimes it's different as far as beat first or writing later, but I, I tend to um I just have an ear that listens a lot if I spend quiet time. And so I end up writing. I, I journal a lot just for my own peace of mind and sanity purposes anyway to get my feelings out. But 
if a lot of the thoughts and things come from a melodic standpoint, then it tends to be a, a song for me in my notes. And I write it a little differently. I can't really explain it, but it, they look almost like church hymns because I'm writing like chorus here, a hook here. It just starts happening that way. And then sometimes I find a beat to match or I hear a beat that really just hits me and then it automatically just starts flowing. I just start writing because it's channeled a, a certain scenario in my head or a certain thought in my mind about a situation. And then it kind of just comes that way. And then from there, I uh, record my own demo at home where I, I kind of lay down the idea that I want and kind of practice to it and, and, and kind of everything that I envisioned for it before I go to a professional setting and get that recording. Um, and then on the back end, we do the vocal production and, and we get it fixed and adjusted exactly to how I, I, I want it to sound. But that's pretty much the process. Wow. Yeah. So how long would you say yeah. you for like one track? Uh, to record a song. So typically the with Darren, the way that his sessions work, um, you get about a four hour block and I tend to do about two to three songs with him uh, within that four hour window. Okay. Of course, on the back end with the production, it's more, but. And where are you located? Is that you, you record in your in the town you live in and everything? Yeah, so I live in Maryland. He lives in Maryland. It's more somewhere in the country. It's almost an hour drive to him, but um, yeah, it, it's pretty local for me. It's a drive. Have you done any um, like bedroom sessions? Like, have you recorded on your own before or, or do you always go out? Uh, well, like when I would, so typically if I'm, if I'm doing something at home with my own mic and, and demoing, I tend to leave it with myself just because the quality of the, the music, the, the level of sound quality is not quite there. So I, I tend to go and outsource for that professional recording experience, but only just because I don't have the time for it's really the issue. Um, if I could, in a perfect world, my brother re records music that sounds like it's ready for radio. He, he's that gifted with like the production and all of that. And, you know, funny enough with songs in the key of love, the first EP, he created the beat for track eight, um, Real Love. And this was before I had come out to him and all of that. And that song and that beat he created and, and I wrote to it. And then we had a real conversation about my sexuality and my life. And, you know, we no longer speak, but, just to say, long story short, that the talent is there in my family and I wish I could just be right at home and record with him, you know, but God, life had other plans. <laughs> so I've been outsourcing my recording process. Hey, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm glad you guys Yeah, it's crazy. I, know. I love that song. I know. <laughs> yes. I heard that beat and I was like, uh, you better give me that because I'm about to write to this. And he he does that where he just, he writes so many beats and things like that. Um, he sung a little bit on Anything Goes, his voice is in there as well as my husband's, but he's very gifted and, you know, it, it sucks the way things are now, but it it definitely is something I would love to do one day to record just at home with my own equipment and sounds and all of those things. Yeah, I think if you start to play, like if you end up doing getting Logic Pro, um, like that's what mm -hmm. got me into um, recording at home and as well as creating at home. Because before that, my first single, I, I, I did record at home, but I sent everything out for like, for like everything. Um, so that was mm -hmm. like, once I started making a beat at home, I was like, okay, like maybe I could record here too. Like, but if you have the yeah. chance, to go out, yeah, but if you have the chance to go out and you know someone, it almost is better for the professional setting. Like I haven't reached that yet. Like I haven't met anyone who mm -hmm. does that yet, but once I do, I feel like I'll, I'll yeah. cross over yeah. doing that. Well, I I love the way your stuff sounds already. And I, I think in a perfect world, I could trap my own self in a room for eight hours a day and, and create probably the best music ever for myself if I really allowed myself that level of time and creativity and I, yeah. I really want to be able to do that. truly because I would love to do it myself I'm not even gonna lie I would love to yeah I want to see what beats you make so bad I'm actually so excited to see uh if you dive into that world because I feel like that is like <laughs> level yeah. so oh, yeah awesome. yeah our video is lagging a little bit, but that's okay. Oh. Um, but I will okay. wrap it up by asking you, what is, 
in the future for you? Like, I know we talked a little yeah. bit about what we want and like what, mm-hmm. you know, a little bit yes. about the yes. but, yes. um, Is there anything that's locked in right now that we can look forward to? So for sure, the deluxe version of Dream World is coming because I have been recording and, and mixing songs for that. And so I really want to, and, and don't hold me to this date, but I really love the 222-2022 thing. <laughs> and I, I'm big on numbers. And so if I can put at least a single out by then, I, I, I want to and will. Yeah. Um, I just need to make sure everything sounds the way I need it to sound, of course. Of yeah. course. Um, but on top of that, I, I want to perform in the DMV area more. Um, I want to get more live performances out there. I want to get more YouTube content out there. And I promise, 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 I'm going to be more engaging on social media, all platforms, TikTok, social media, <laughs> Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. I have got to do a better job with that. And so I, I'm going to be just more active and more seen and, and more in the the digital universe, I should say, with with all my platforms. I, I really want to. Perfect. I'm obviously so excited. For that. <laughs> um, I'm going to have your, that actually leads perfectly to my ending. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have your uh, Instagram handle is actually going to be right under your picture here for this whole video. So people definitely check out Dorian on Instagram, give him a follow. And then I'm going to also have his YouTube, his music, all that information in the description box down below. But um, for the links that I don't have, where can everyone find you? What, where, like, tell us like where, um, where everything is at, like where, what do you, what are all your platforms? Okay. So Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, it's all at It's Dorian Official, D-O-R-I-A-N, It's Dorian Official. You can find me on Twitter. It's at Dorian Lake, L-A-K-3. Um, you can find me on YouTube. It should be at It's Dorian Official, or you can search my name. I believe it's Dorian Lake. You can find me that way. Um, but yes, please hook them up with some links and stuff like that, because we're going to be merging our worlds now. Come on now, y'all better <laughs> join me too. <laughs> guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to place everything down below. I really want you guys to please go check out his music on Spotify. Let it into your soul. Let it into your heart. When I tell you, like, there are, there's so much music out in the world and there's only certain things that I can actually label as like healing and life-changing. And wow. this, your, your songs and your music and your art is that for me. And it means so much to be able to, to pay that forward. And I hope that this this video and, and my platform can grow just so that this can bring you along with me because <laughs> it is just so like, I'll, I'll always be advocating for your music and what it's done for Thank me. Thank you so and much. I love it. Thank you. And I'm so appreciative that you came on here to talk with me. And Same. Same. Yeah, just thank you so much for just uh, just being a friend. Honestly, like we've ch- chatted like here and there over the past year, mm-hmm. and it's just, even mm-hmm. if it's just like an insta like here and there, like I have yeah. felt before, and vice versa, and that that means the world, especially from world. Yeah, and especially from another um, independent artist, like that's what this all about is all about is like there is no competition out there like everyone should be helping each other we should be having open discussions like this we should be talking about becoming full-time we should be talking about what our music means to us we should be talking about how we want to grow why we grow and why we have grown like these are all Mm -hmm. things i feel like people are not open about so i thank you for for coming on and yeah opening up your heart and I'm so excited for everything you have to come out. And you. Uh, we will definitely- Yes, there's see. more to come, y'all. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> no, I'm ready for so it. I'm sure they are too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You it was so it. good talking to you. Oh my gosh. A, a joy, <laughs> a joy, a serious joy. I want to thank everyone for watching the video. Make sure you please slap the like button on this video. Subscribe to this YouTube content coaching channel where we learn to grow our business, grow our brands, expand our music, open up all these avenues to become the creator you want to be. Also check out my YouTube main channel, my variety channel, just strictly under Nigel Battle, where you'll find my music, my drag music videos, my vlogs, all my fun stuff about my life. And then also in the description, you will have all of Dorian's links to his music, his YouTube channel, and his Instagram handle and all the social media. So thank you guys for joining me. Thank you, Dorian, for being here with me. And I will see you guys all in the next video. See you guys.